President. Madam the President. junior senator from Washington. Madam President, I think it's, I, I wanted to uh, commend and thank the senator from Mississippi for his hard work. Uh, I have the great pleasure of working with him on the Commerce Committee, and I can tell you we're here tonight, not at this very moment at 10 o'clock, but the advent of getting to this moment where we can proceed on such important legislation, thanks to him and his great work as the ranking member on the Commerce Committee. So I, I, I want to personally thank him for that, uh, because I think the senator described the actual process pretty well. That um, We have two colleagues who've had a lot of foresight and thought about this issue. Senator Schumer, who for a long time has discussed America's competitiveness and what we need to do about it, uh, particularly as it relates to shifting change in, in demographics on a lot of foreign policy issues, and our colleague from Indiana, who has also, uh, in the last two years, put a lot of work into thinking about the future of AI, competitiveness, manufacturing, and what we need to do to be competitive in the United States of America. So the Schumer-Young proposal is not new to this Congress. It was proposed uh, before, and so this is work for uh, many, many uh, many months. And I, I do think, as Senator uh, Wicker stated, that we should thank them for their foresight. Uh, I think, depending on what part of America you're from, you have a perspective about the economy of the future and how we're going to compete. For me, I'm very blessed to represent the state of Washington with much innovation and uh, really a long time of work to get to the point where we are today. I guess that's one thing I would like to depart, that we didn't, we didn't get to the Northwest economy overnight. Uh, and a lot of thought went into the education system, the workforce training issues. Um, sometimes I just say we're blessed to have people there who stayed and innovated with the companies that they innovated in. And where we are today represents decades and decades of work uh, but it also gives you a little bit of foresight into the importance of research and development. The University of Washington being a leader in research and development uh, with NSF, with predecessors here in the Senate who, Warren Magnuson specifically, focusing on both NIH and NSF dollars, and uh, a size of an institution with 40,000 students, but also a premier research institution. So that has given us a good footing for the future, the work that they've done. And the advent of Microsoft and so many companies with executives who then also put more into the University of Washington so we could grow our skill set and keep investing. So it's a long-term investment. So our colleague from Indiana and our colleague from New York basically challenged us to think about what is that R&D investment for the United States of America and are we competing? Senator Wicker knows that this is something the Commerce Committee twice before considered in 2007 and 2010. We said, by God, we're going to double the R&D budget and we're going to compete. Believe it or not, it was George Bush. George Bush, as president, first authored a report that said America needs to have a more aggressive competitiveness policy, probably looking to Asia and seeing what was happening and saying we needed to do more. The advent of that is we started down the right road. We tried to make a commitment. We didn't completely follow through because of the downturn of the economy. And so instead of doubling that R&D budget in a short period of time, five to seven years, and then we thought 11 years, well, it's turned into like 22 years, and we really haven't quite done the job. So our two colleagues, I thank them. I thank the senator from Indiana, um, and I certainly thank the senator from uh, New York, because I think without his um, continued heft behind, behind this issue, <laughs> saying that it's a priority, I told him he must have read Andy Groh's book, Only the Paranoid Survived, because he clearly is adopted that attitude as it relates to America's competitiveness and making sure that we make investments in the semiconductor area, uh, an area he knows well. But 
that he really does believe uh, needs the R&D investment and uh, focus. So I, I applaud him because it really, with, without his uh, major push, I don't think we would be here on the Senate floor tonight. So as my colleague Senator Wicker said, this bill includes a massive investment in the NSF budget and in a DOE budget, which is kind of tandem. That's what's happened every time we've had this discussion. NSF and DOE, the Department of Energy, and the National Science Foundation have been our key tools for research and, and, uh, and development in key areas that keep manufacturing competitive, keep our energy sector competitive, keep our technology competitive. So it's been major investments. The challenge that we faced is that we also were asking ourselves, besides the trying to double our investment in these areas, we also said we want to get more out of the investment we have today. We, we want to basically get more out of the technology that we're creating and get it translated into more innovation right away. So this legislation does that by creating a new tech directorate at the National Science Foundation to, uh, if you will, we have basic research, applied research, to have translational or user research to more quickly aid in the adoption of technologies that will help our economy grow. So that was a pretty big step in the legislation. And of course, uh, Senator Wicker and I believed that investing in the workforce that we would need with STEM education was also a priority, so a pretty big hefty boost in science, technology, engineering, math in this underlying bill, including saying women and minorities in the sciences have to be a priority and we have to do more to encourage that. Uh, but I want to thank Senator Wicker especially for his uh, insistence on a key provision that I think is also important. So part of this is saying we need to be competitive and increase the R&D budget. Part of it is saying we need to have more translational science, get more out of our universities, have them protect their intellectual property better. But if this is also about having all of America, all of America better prepared for the economy of future and compete, Senator Wicker said, I want 20 percent of this bill and legislation the R&D dollars to go to states that are called EBSCOR qualifying states. They are regions of the country we have identified we need to strengthen our research capacity. So the 25 states that are qualified as EBSCOR states could, they know, and it's a program that has been built around strengthening their research and development, and Senator Wicker's insistent on this provision will help those states grow their research uh, muscle for the future, their research ecosystem, strengthen their universities, strengthen the dollars that go to them. So I applaud him for um, that, that dedication. The head of NSF, the National Science Foundation, uh, um, will tell you that our motto for this bill overall, or our goal as a nation, is to be for um, innovation everywhere connected to opportunities everywhere, connected to universities. And by the provision that Senator Wicker uh, proposed, we literally are taking another step towards building that infrastructure everywhere. So if you're in Fairbanks, Alaska, or you're in Mississippi, or some other part of the country, those institutions will get an extra focus and push to get more research development. and. And I like to say, you never know what's going to come out of that. You never know what's going to come out of one individual at one institution with a great idea that really uh, charges forward in a new area. So I think it's a great, it's a great provision of the legislation. So we have, I think, uh, with the other provisions our colleagues worked on, Senator Warner and Senator Cornyn, on trying to, in the last NDAA bill, make us crisply focus on the immense competition that we face in the semiconductor industry. We really have, uh, I think, before us the shape of the debate about America's competition. 
We're not afraid to put research dollars on the table as a country. Our nation believes in that more than other nations. Our people believe that that is what's made our nation great. And they know that if we keep making that investment, we're going to grow jobs and the economy. So we've made that commitment in this legislation. We've made the commitment to diversify our research, to get more out of our research and translate that faster. And we've made a commitment to skill and educate a workforce, uh, not only the diversity we'd like to see in science, but the geographic diversity we'd like to see as well. Now, we didn't spend a lot of time talking about what's in here for the Department of Energy. It's not specific as to what the Department of Energy will do for this, but it's safe to say the Department of Energy's uh, innovation program and ARPA-E uh, basically trying to help us with the next generation of energy technology, but also includes carbon sequestration and a whole variety of other areas and nuclear power and a whole translation of various energy sciences. I really believe we'll be working together. I believe DOE, NSF, our national laboratories, our universities, the collaboration that we heard about in committee will be the kind of growth that comes out of this legislative effort. So uh, many Americans at home, uh, I can just, all I can say is we're making another investment in American know-how, the ability to use our scientific skills to help create the next generation of um, work and effort. So I too want to thank our staffs. Uh, I, I certainly, um, on my side, I want to thank um, our staff director, David Strickland and Melissa Porter, Richard Dwayne Chamberlain, Mary Gunther, and Stacy Baird. Um, I, I too want to thank uh, the senator's staff, uh, John Keast and Sherry um, uh, Pasco and James Mazel, because they have been a great team to work with. And I also want to thank um, on Senator Schumer's staffs, uh, Mike. Uh, Kukin and um, John Cardinal, because they have been a constant source of, of all of this. And of course, all the floor team that has been out here working on this. So uh, I know there's other people from this, from Senator Wicker's staff, Crystal Tully and Stephen Hall, Stephen Wall, and I'm sure, oh, I should, I'd say on my staff, um, Jonathan Hale and uh, David Martin and Amit Ronan, who worked on a lot of the energy stuff that were, were part of this um, underlying staff. So I'm sure we'll have more to thank later. This is not as if, uh, this is a wish by Senator Wicker that this would be the wrap up. <laughs> I know we're not quite at the wrap up, uh, but um, we're hoping that we will uh, we've hotlined a manager's proposal. I hope our colleagues will look at that. I hope that um, our colleagues uh, will allow us to move forward on that if they, they're not going to let us move forward on that. I wish they'd come down to the floor and tell us that. But it's time to move forward on getting the rest of this legislation through the Senate and move to uh, whatever discussions we're going to have with the, with the House. But uh, safe to say this represents a lot of work by a lot of people. In committee, I think uh, we processed uh, before we even got to uh, the legislature, something like 52 amendments prior to the actual day, the substitute, I think we processed another 40 or 50 amendments. I think we had uh, dozens of roll call votes. That's all in committee out here. Uh, we've processed lots of legislation to be part of the manager's amendment. I'd safe to say practically every member of the United States Senate has had some uh, part or discussion or legislative uh, suggestions that are part of this bill. So it is, as Senator Wicker said, a very regular order process, albeit um, quick at times. But I, I think we have a lot to do. We've been very challenged as a Congress to deal with a lot of issues, COVID specifically, but the competition is not waiting. And the competition has different tools. We have a different government, and we believe in collaboration. And collaboration, yes, takes a little more time. But I think it's going to strengthen us in our ability to compete, because we're going to be 
on the same page about what we need to get done. So I hope our colleagues will indulge us to move ahead. I hope that we can get this next manager's amendment and other things voted on very soon. So I thank the president. I yield the floor.